Hello students, in today's video we will do remaining questions of course code 0625 year 2024 May June variant 3. So from question number 6, figure 6.1 shows a thin converging lens used to produce a magnified image of object AB. So here we have a principal axis on which the object is placed between lens and the focal point. Explain the meaning of terms principal focus and focal length. So when the light ray is parallel to principal axis, it converges and passes through a point on principal axis. This point is known as focal point or uh, you can say principal focus. And let's suppose this is the center of the lens. The distance from center of the lens to focal point is known as focal length. So I'm writing the definitions. It is a point where the line parallel to principal axis converges after passing through the lens. And focal length is distance between principal focus and the center of the lens. B part says on figure 6.1 draw the magnified image of AB and show your working. So a light ray which is parallel to principal axis will pass through this focal point and the light ray which passes through the center of the lens will go undeviated and when you will extend these two lines they will meet at a certain point. Make sure you extend them very carefully and they don't deviate from their original path. So they will meet at certain point and this point will make your image and this is BA which is your image. Make sure the image is upright that means B comes upward and A comes at the bottom. Seventh question says figure 7.1 shows two charged metal plates. X marks the position of center of the space between two plates. On figure 7.1 draw at least four lines to show the patterns and the direction of electric field between the two charged plates. So electric field lines will emerge from positive and enter into negative plate. Make sure that the distance between your lines should be equal. That means electric field inside the plate is equal. This is the pattern of electric field. Second question says describe the effect on negatively charged particle placed at X. So if on X we have a negative charged particle, it would be attracted by plate A. B part says during a thunderstorm an electric field is set up between cloud and ground. Charges on the cloud and the ground are shown in figure 7.2. So this is a cloud which is negatively charged. Beneath it we have ground which is positively charged. An electric field is similar to the electric field inside two charged plates. The lightning shown in figure 7.2 discharge a current of 28,000 amperes for 0.012 seconds. Calculate the charge that flows from the cloud to the ground. So we have provided with the current and the time and we are supposed to calculate the charge. So we can use the definition of current which is the charge flown per unit time. So for charge we can say it's current multiplied by time. So 28,000 multiplied by 0 0.0012. So the charge would be 34 coulombs. Second question says the lightning transfer 1.2 into 10 raised to power 8 joules of energy. Calculate the potential difference between the base of the ground, uh, base of the cloud and the ground. So we have energy and we are supposed to get the potential difference between the cloud and the ground. So we can use two formulas. First is this one. Energy is equals to IVT. To get the potential difference, it would be energy divided by current multiplied by time. Or we have another formula, which is the definition of potential difference, which is energy per unit charge. I'm using the second one to get the potential difference. Energy is 1.2 into 10 raised to power 8. And the charge we have just calculated is 34. So the potential difference is 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 joules. Eighth question says, figure 8.1 shows image produced during the different medical scanning procedures, ultrasound and x-rays. First question is saying, define x-rays. So a normal human can hear a sound of frequency range 20 and 20,000 hertz. Any sound which is greater than 20,000 hertz are not audible and they are considered as ultrasounds. So sounds of frequency higher than 20k hertz. Second question says, state how the speed of sound in liquid compares to the speed of sound in air. 
so sound has highest speed in solids then in liquids and the least speed in air so i am writing sound travel faster in liquid as compared to air third question says x ray are part of electromagnetic spectrum state the speed of x ray in vacuum so x rays are part of electromagnetic spectrum which has the speed of 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second in vacuum b part says describe three similarities or differences between the use of ultrasound and x ray in medical scanning procedure so both are used to image the internal parts of body both travel through the body and the difference is the x ray make the image of bones and ultrasound make the image of soft tissues of body Ninth question says figure 9.1 shows a mobile or cell phone being charged on a wireless charging plate. The plate has the primary coil and the mobile has the secondary coil. When the charging plate is switched on, there is an alternating current in primary coil and a secondary coil is in the mobile phone. Explain how the current is produced in secondary coil. So this is basically a working on the principle of transformer. So transformer has two coils. First one is primary coil and the other one is secondary coil on which we get the output. So when an alternate current flows through primary coil, it produces a magnetic field and this magnetic field is a changing magnetic field. So uh, alternating current produces a changing magnetic field. This changing magnetic field creates a changing flux in the secondary coil that produces EMF in it. So the answer is alternating current produces changing magnetic field in primary coil. This field also changes flux in the secondary coil and EMF is induced in secondary coil. B part says the maximum energy stored in battery of the mobile is 0.012 kilowatt hour. Show that the maximum energy is 4.3 into 10 raised to power 4 joules. So energy is given in kilowatt hour but we need to convert this into joules. Maximum energy is 0.012 kilowatt hour and to convert this energy into joules we need to multiply this term by 3.6 into 10 raised to power 6 and the answer will be in joules then. So it is 4.3 into 10 raised to power 4 joules. Second question says the charging plate in figure 9.1 has useful power output of 15 watt. The phone manufacturer claims that the battery can be charged to 50% capacity in less than 30 minutes. Show that this claim is true. So they are saying that we are supposed to check if 50% of battery can be charged in 30 minutes or not. Or we can say if 100% of battery can be charged in 1 hour or less than 1 hour or not. So we have to check the time for charging it. So the information that we have is maximum energy and we have a power output which is 15 watt. So we can use the formula of power over here. So power is basically the energy supplied in unit time. So if we want to get the time, we can use this equation as energy divided by power. So energy is 4.3 into 10 raised to power 4 and power is 15. That means the time would be 2866.6 seconds. I am converting it into minutes. That would be uh, 47 minutes. Now 47 minutes are required to charge the battery to 100% capacity or at the time to charge the battery to 50% capacity would be half of 47 which is 23 minutes and that means it is less than 30 minutes so the claim is true. Next question says leakage in underground water pipes are detected using radioactive tracer. Figure 10.1 shows a radiation detector above a water pipe. So here we have a water line and uh, there is a detector which is going to detect a radiation if there is any leakage in the pipe. So the first question says, before the radioactive tracer is added to the water, the detector measures the background radiations above the pipe. The average background radiation are 26 counts per minute. Define background radiations. The radiation that are present in our environment are called background radiation. Second question says, suggest one source of radiation that make a significant contribution to background count rate. 
so background radiations come from food rocks they can also come from cosmic radiations you can name any of them third part says a radioactive tracer is added to the water the counter in figure 10.1 shows the count rate in counts per minute above the leak in water pipe determine the count rate due to the tracer so the counter is reading uh, 382 counts per minute but this also involves the background radiation so we need to subtract the count of background radiation to get the actual count so i am subtracting 26 which is the count of background radiation so the actual count is 356 b part says suggest which radioactive emission alpha beta or gamma is suitable to detect the leakage in water pipe and explain your answer so it can't be alpha because alpha has less penetration energy and it can't pass through soil and reach the counter and i am writing beta particles and the reason is Alpha particles cannot pass through soil, but beta particles have enough penetration to pass through soil and reach the counter. C part says, explain why the radioactive isotope must not have a short half-life. So, there does not allow time for detection before decay rate become very low. Second question says, explain why the radioactive isotope must not have a longer half-life because they will contaminate the water if they are present for a longer period of time. A galaxy is approximately 1.2 into 10 raised to power 26 meters from Earth. Scientists observe light from the distance galaxy. The wavelength of the observed light is longer than the wavelength of light emitted from the galaxy. Stay the name of this effect. So if there is a galaxy which is moving away from Earth, whatever light it will emit, the wavelength will get longer when it reaches to Earth. In electromagnetic spectrum, when a light is shifted towards longer wavelength, it is basically shifting towards a red color of the visible light. So this process is known as a red shift. B part says state the current estimate value of Hubble constant. So it has the value of 2.2 into 10 raised to power negative 18 per second. Second question says calculate the speed at which the galaxy is moving away from the earth. We can use the formula of Hubble constant which is velocity divided by distance. So if we need to calculate the velocity it would be Hubble constant multiplied by distance. Plugging in the values the distance is already provided by the question which is 1.2 into 10 raised to power 26. So the speed is 2.6 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second. Third part says, scientists have measured the speed at which distant galaxies are moving away from the Earth and their distances from the Earth. These measurements suggest that all universe was once a single point. Explain why. So, when scientists measure the distance of the galaxies from the Earth and they measure the speed of the galaxies from the Earth, or you can say they compare the time by using these two quantities, they found out then that long time ago they were a single point and they are emerged from a single point by a Big Bang theory. So, that means if they are moving away from the Earth, so the universe is expanding and before galaxies were closer to each other and they were a single point. Thanks for watching the video. If you like it, please hit the like button and subscribe my channel.